Urban History Explores. Today we are at the Heights of Abraham, so we're going to take the cable cars up to the top over there. So we'll show you the cable cars and we'll show you around the Heights of Abraham. We're hi? here with Shyla. What's up? And we're here Yay. with Marlon. Yeah. Off we go. We're going, aren't we? Yes, we are. Are you going to do a video? Yeah, I'm going to video out a window. Not like your actual video. Ooh. Yeah, up we go. Hmm. I'm probably gonna get look high at that view. Oh yeah, look at that. Huh. Wow, look at down there. You can see the cows. <laughs> you can see the cows. You can see wow, everything. it's really high up. See the people behind us? Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. You can see the factory there. Where's the factory? On this side. Oh. Oh, I see it. We can move on to the dye well. factory. I'm not even scared. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I'm not scared. I was brave enough to cross the ladder and now I'm brave enough to go on the cable car. Yeah, we're going to stop for a minute now. Oh, hashtag. <laughs> he, has a, he has a YouTube channel. Okay. Oh. Please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Just to enjoy the view. No, it's when they let other people yeah, on. Yeah, please watch them out the view. Oh, you can see the river. Yeah. Yeah. You can see that. What do you mean there's so many houses? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's warm in here, though. This is something I've never done before. Why are you not being in a cable no, car? I've been in a cable car. This is my first time being in a cable car. It's my third. That sounds like a complete wimp if I said I was a little bit scared. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is, are they? <laughs> I think it's because you watch films, don't you? Cables. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's you know what I mean? Where people, yeah. Okay, go well, a bit Nearly at the top now. Nearly at Heights of Abraham. Are you gonna do your video? I'm doing, I'm filming I'm, I'm now. I'm filming now. I'm on the video show. There's a number nine over there. Don't there, I think it's a bit. Oh, I don't like them bits. Oh, where it rocks. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're at the Heights of Abraham. Yeah, we're getting off now, so we are there. winning the first place, which is the Fossil Factory. So here we go. Oh look, 1700s Georgian visitors. An age of enlightenment. <laughs> 1750s, changing times. Here is a donkey over here, if you connect oh, me. Leon, no, see by Shelley. That was Mary Shelley's husband. John Keats. The poet. And um, if you um, record next to me, um, there is um, a donkey over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred celebrity stars. We've had Imperial Grand Duke Michael of Russia, um, Jane Austen, Queen Victoria, Lord Byron, Mary Shelley, 
Princess Victoria. Um, well, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria came here, but she was a princess at the time. All right. Oh, oh, look at that. You can go in and put your face in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Eight two four is day trippers. <laughs> Wait until they're finished, and then you can have a go. Victoria Prospect Tower. We can go in there in a bit. In that tower there. Oh, let's have a go. In a minute, Charlotte, calm down. Let's go and have a look up here, Marla. Remember what we found in that mine? Shala, fossil factories in here. Look at these ones, Sha. Ichthyosaur. It's an ichthyosaur. To the great mass and cavern um, it's a guided tour what you see so we're going to go inside there so it is going to be a little bit of a workout but the workout will be split into three different sections where you stop at each of our chambers have a little chat about mining geology and all things underground now this will be in the five footing area so if you have to watch your heads, even if you're not that tall and if you are quite tall then you need to watch your heads a little bit more <laughs> hopefully you're all, all wearing sensible footwear it does look that way so you, have to, so you have to take count of your own grip I can't go around and check all your souls individually so do just take appropriate care particularly in the entrance tunnel because the entrance tunnel is quite steep and it is quite wet and slippy so do take care make use of the handrails as we go down there if you do have any health issues such as breathing issues mobility issues or heart issues do take that into account because, as I said, it is going to be a little bit of a workout. So it's going to be about 7 degrees down there, so it will be quite chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got only 13 degrees, so if you've got another layer, you may wish to turn it off. Alright, let's go. Did he say we have 20? No, we all walked together. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
slow and small for a grown man to fit down. So it's a good thing that humans come in a miniature, isn't it? Yeah. Give you a little big hand to get you down there, get you chipping away, and then drag you out by the ankle at the end of the day. Sound good? No. Oh, come on. Come on, it's not child abuse. It's child abuse. That's all it is. <laughs> no. Yeah. No? No, we might Well, maybe I should move on before we get prosecuted. So, um, we're now. Hang on, guys, this is safety stuff. So we're going to be heading now into the pipe vein. This pipe vein does get quite low, you do need to watch heads. It gets a bit narrow as well, or gets a bit heavy by the good sake. We'll also be beginning, hang on guys, we will be beginning our workout. So we're going to be going on some steep, uneven and slightly slippery steps. So do take care as we go along. And I must tell you that this is the part of the tour that we call the point of no return. It sounds a bit ominous because it is. Basically what it means is to continue on with me past this point, we're all going to be stuck down here forever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right, we're not really. We're going to be stuck down here for at least another 20, 25 minutes whilst we complete the tour slash workout. So if you are to turn back, this is the time to do so, but I'm going to hop over and you guys can follow along if you like. Come on. Me? Come on. Go in front, please. Go on in front and go with Mama. Whoa, it's hard to walk through this, isn't it? Especially if you're tall. <coughs> it's a bit cool down here. <laughs> Pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've been dripped on a few times. Keep on the path, please. <laughs> Hold on. What? Oh. Sort of be at sound here, because I'm just getting back of your head all the time. Alright, well you go in front for a bit now, yeah? Oh God! These stairs are so hard to climb. I'm tall though, aren't I? It's like, it's like they take forever, This is what we're in that mine, weren't it? Yeah. What mine? Well, we went in. Oh, yeah. Oh, in that, in that, over that bridge. Near that, yeah. That, bit, that factory, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That, that we're looking at like mine, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, Leon, if it make that factory mine part of it, so it's not. It's yeah. It's an unsafe. I think this is safe. Ish. Who say it was on for five miles? Five miles. I don't think it goes on for five miles. Look at that When it's blazing out outside today. Why do you want to be like a winter, it'd be even colder? No, this is the coldest. Yeah, so that tunnel over there goes on to the right. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this bit. He's all my foot in that, Leon. Can stand over here, We cannot talk anymore, man. Because it's, uh, well, it's, it's pretty great, yeah. It's also pretty big. So it goes on about 150 feet off into the blackness, which I will illuminate shortly. It's 90 feet tall at the back of the chamber with a 110 foot shaft back up to the surface. So we are 110 feet below the ground right now. But this chamber, it wasn't formed in the same way as that pipe vein that we just came through. So that pipe vein, originally, all of that empty open space we walked through would have been full of lead, chock a block with the stuff. And the miners chased the vein, hacking it out inch by inch with their pickaxes for about 60 years. But this chamber was formed primarily by natural erosion. So about 10,000 years ago, this would have been nothing more than a small crack. And then around that time, the last ice age is coming to its end. You guys know about the ice age, right? You seen the films? Yeah. And you go around them and you know what's going on, good stuff. But it's not the same ice age, it's not the one with woolly mammoths or saber tooth cats, but it is the same principle. The world is very cold, lots of ice and snow about. But then as the temperatures begin to rise, a lot of the ice and snow begins to melt. And when it melts, the water that comes from it, it's got to go somewhere, right? So a lot of it flows off into the sea and it raises the sea levels, but some of it goes down underground. First created underground rivers, sorry, underground reservoirs, sorry, that drain by underground rivers. And one of those rivers would have flown through the small crack that was here, bringing with loads of sand and sediment, small stones, stuff like that, and forcing it through this narrow gap. 
So it's rubbing up against the rock walls, wearing them away, and wearing all the minerals that trapped inside the rock too. So what you end up with, after thousands of years of erosion, is this big hollowed out chamber that's filled to the brim with a mineral rich sediment, or a minerally mud, if you like. So the mud, it was about 5% left. Doesn't sound like a lot to us, but it was enough to attract the attention of one Mr. Tinker. And he assembled a small band of men. They came down here with their buckets to scoop up all of the lovely leady mud, get it back up to the surface, sieve it, refine it, and have it turned into lead bars to be sold. But before I continue talking about the exploits of Mr. Tinker, I'm going to let you guys experience the miner's gloom. So we are going to be turning the lights off. It is going to get quite dark. Are we all all right with that? Yeah. Well, for those of you who said no, the lights at the back of the chamber will stay on, so do feel free to stay by those for the duration of the dark bit. Otherwise, if you want to head down towards that barrier, you'll get the best experience. Let's go. Down here. You can hear the man. It's basically... Just stay, yeah. Basically, this chamber, as you see the next one, is connected to the next chamber. Please, we are going to have absolute darkness. Okay. Let's take this. Let's take this. This monstrosity right here. So this beast, this beast is called Headache Rock. <laughs> and it's called that for quite a good reason. Now it's not blood up there, it's iron ore. But there is probably a fair bit of skin and hair on it. <laughs> so if you try to avoid adding any more, that would be good. Otherwise you get Frankenstein's wig growing out and get a re-creeper. <laughs> You are? I, I just took a picture of the floor and you can see off the wall. Discipline, 
they rented the mine from the landowners and they, they allocated the plots to the miners inside the box. So inside the box, there's another pair of brothers, Isaiah Fair and Mordecai Fair. So you could call these fellas the stereotypical miners, the fraud of this operation. The blokes down here with the big axes, chipping away at the lead, getting ready to set into the surface. So how old do you reckon they may have lived to be? Any guesses? So 45? Eighty forty two. Forty two. Well, if we start at forty, who thinks higher than forty? Hands up. A couple, maybe one or two. So everyone else thinks lower, do you? You bunch of pessimists, Jim. Well, you optimists, you've got it right because Isaiah, Isaiah made it to ninety two. Oh, yeah. He didn't retire until he was seventy two. And Mordecai, in true brotherly competitive spirit, he didn't retire until he was seventy eight. So she's still down here, swing her finger, she's 78 years old. And then, with the money you made mine, you bought a shop down in Malabat. And this isn't the time before all shops in Malabat. Fish and chip shops, <laughs> when they had some variety. And then he lived on to be a hundred and three. And if you don't believe, he can get his head down to works of the graveyard, but he's still there. Well, his grave's still there. Yeah, you can't go have a chat, but you can have a his grave on a little extra proof. Now the wives of these men do tell their own side to the story. So Mordecai's wife was all right, because she was a stout woman, a witch woman. So she'd be stood up at the top of the shaft all day, eight to four, Monday to Saturday, winding up the big old buckets of lead, or corks, as they were. Now these corks, when they're full, they can weigh up to 70 kilos. So you can imagine that Mrs. Furman was quite a, a muscular, quite a strong, quite a bit of healthy lady. That's why she was said to be old age herself. But Isaiah, had six wives. It's not all at the same time, one after the other, they did keep dying. Now the reason they kept dying is because they're the most dangerous jobs in the industry. They worked in the refinement industry. So what that entails is once you've got the chunk of ore to the surface, the job isn't done. You've got to separate the rock from the lead because you never mind pure ore. The first thing you do is you set the ore on the ground, take a big hammer, and smash the ore into smithereens. And they take these smithereens, these little fragments, Right, it was with dust, which the miners call Beland, which is very important to spell and pronounce correctly. So you take that Beland, and you sip out the last bits of rock and sand, so hopefully you're left with a pure lead dust. And this dust you can put into a furnace, smelt it at a really high temperature, and there you go, jobs are good, and you show up yourself a lovely lead bar, ready to sell and make lots and lots of money, which is, after all, the prime purpose of these mines. But at each stage of this process, these women are kicking up little particles of lead into the air. And as you might know, lead is quite toxic. So when these women inevitably breathe this stuff in, it's going to do serious damage to the inside of their lungs. Oftentimes, they'll be coughing up blood, and these women would be looking to make it past 30. So it really was the women in the refinement process that brought the brunt of the premature death in the lead mining industry, rather than those down here on the ground. Which is not to say that no one did die down here. So back to the plaque, we have two more names. We've got Bernard Young, B-Y. Now Bernard Young was a hanger on it. That's his job title. Doesn't sound like he did a great deal, does it? And it's true, his job was not particularly taxing. He'd sit around the bottom of the shaft all day and he would hang the buckets, once they're full of lead, on to the rope. That was it. This is Bernard Young's book for him. But he did suit him quite well because he had lost a leg to a French cannonball. So he didn't have one leg whilst he was down in it. And the final name there, the final thing we're talking about at all today, is Thomas Wood. Now Thomas Wood did die down there. He was 15 years old. He was crushed to death in a rock fall. But when I say a rock fall, I don't mean that bits fell down from the ceiling or fell from the walls or anything like that. But you may notice we don't have any supports in this game. Nothing to hold the ceilings or the walls up. And you need not be concerned, that's because the limestone is really stable. We trust it wholeheartedly. We trust it with your lives. And mine. So it is completely fine. We don't, we don't worry about it at all. But when you hack this stuff up into little bits, it's not quite so sturdy. So these things are called miners' deaths. Quite common as named, but basically it's raw limestone that the miners had to hack out of the way in order to get out of the lead that they want. But this is not a quarry, you're not going to get paid money to want to scope off the surface, wasting time and effort. So we either push against the walls, backfill all the exhausted lead veins like this, or they create huge great stacks of the veins. And we're actually stood on a stack of deaths right now, which has all been cemented together for our safety. But back when these places were worked, such things would not have been cemented. It would have been like a big dry stone structure, very carefully and very skillfully stacked up. One on top of two, two on top of one. And of course, accidents can happen, and collapses can happen. 
and it was one of these collapses that led to 50 tons of limestone coming down on Thomas Wood the day before his 60th birthday. So I hate to end on quite such a sad note, but that is our talk. We've got 80 steps left to freedom, which I'm sure we're all looking forward to. But you will be rewarded for your efforts by a glorious view once we get to the top. So I've been Alec, you've been underground. I hope you've had a good song, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I heard that. That means that you're <laughs> Up we go, there's 80 stairs or something, 81 stairs. 81? Yeah. <laughs> I am not excited for this. It's very narrow, isn't it? Yeah, that too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just whack my head. I'll hold them. <laughs> To Victoria's Tower, is it? Yes, we are. Yeah. And by the look of it, it kind of looks very big. Like, really big. Yeah. It even has a pirate flag on the top. It's Victoria <laughs> yeah. Pros Pros Prospect <laughs> Tower. So we got that one, guys. It doesn't break. Going into the Victoria Tower now. Reminds me of Warwick, Marlon. We're going up turrets. Be careful on these stairs, shall we? Yeah. Keep hold of the rail, yeah? Don't put him on there though. Look at the views from up here. Sophie, listen, listen to me. 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 Listen to
Yeah. You be careful. We're at this, which is called the Summer House, uh, and we're on the Miners Trail at the moment. So we're going to go and have a look at the last part of this place. Is this one the last one or what? I'd say it's the same. Now this all arrived here about 180 million years ago when this used to be a volcano. Don't worry, it's not a volcano anymore. We're not going to get blasted into oblivion. Uh, but it was 180 million years ago, obviously a very powerful volcano. It was called the Derbyshire Dome, that's how it's been referred to these days. And it caused a massive cracks and fissures that run for about five miles, um, right from the village of Bonsall, which is this direction approximately, to the village of Crite in this direction. And they've been mined all along these cracks and fissures, and all these minerals arrived that time, bubbling up from the crust, and in liquid form, and coating the limestone here. Okay. Now, what we've actually got here, particular minerals which I'd like to point out to you. Can you see, if I run my torch along, this grey band here? Yeah. We will see that. <coughs> now, who has to brush their teeth? Yeah. Not a, might be a random question you think it is, really. Who got such a you don't have to brush your teeth? No? I have no, to brush you, my... you don't have to brush your teeth? 
What's going on, mums and dads? You need to get the visit from the tooth fairy rather earlier than later, I think. So those of you who brush your teeth, if you get your supermarket, get your toothpaste from the supermarket, you'll be getting this stuff. This is a mineral form of fluoride, floor spa, okay? Now, under here, this black line that pulls out here, that was known as a mine by the miners as blackjack. We know it as zinc. And under here, you'll probably recognise this. You go in that rusty colour. That's iron ore. And what happens when iron ore comes into contact with the air, particularly damp air, it oxidises or rusts, as we know it, uh, and gives that lovely orange colour. It's very, very distinctive. Now here we've got some very pretty quartz. Can you all see that? It's sparkling in the rock. We've got quite a lot of quartz, quartz right through this part of the mine. And so when we go further up, I'll show it to you, but it's all very sparkly and very, very pretty. We've also got a lot of this stuff here. This is calcite. And calcite is what we call a secondary mineral. It didn't arrive with that volcano we're talking about. This would have actually come later on, about 30 million years later, only 30 million years or so later than the other minerals. And basically it's formed between really water and limestone, mixing together under certain temperatures, and actually at certain conditions forming this fabulous mineral here, which is actually used, for example, in Rome paint. They grind it up, they give it wonderful reflective qualities, luminescence. We call it Gandalf, this little stone of ours. It lights up the way. Anyone else? No one into Tolkien here? No? Oh, okay. It's not for everyone. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, these are all very interesting, aren't they? But that's not what the miners are after. The miners are after this stuff. I'm going to just show it up. It's really very small, this set piece here. But can you see this rather sparkly stone? Lead. 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 It's lead. What did the ancient Greeks call it? Lead. Galena. And Galena means bright one, shining one. Can you see why? Yes. Shines, yeah. glisters. Now it shines like that because it's got silver in it. Um, the silver content in this valley, in this dale, I'd say, according to the stuff I've read, they said it's about 20 to 30 percent silver in this, which means it's me medium grade lead, okay? But not the best, not the worst, but certainly enough to make your fortune at certain periods in history. And You've people certainly did here. Okay, now if we go further up the mine, I'll just light it up for you. We'll walk up here. <laughs> Let's go further up here, darling. Okay. Can we all see the roof here? Okay, now I'm just have a look at some of these um, markings up here. Can we all see that sort of swirly lines up there? It looks like rippling rock. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, now that's called scalloping, and that's been caused by successive ice ages, okay? That is a dead giveaway sign. If you see that underground, you know you're in a natural cavern, okay? It's been formed, it's been eroded away the rock by melt flow and sediment over deep, deep time. And all caverns are often formed by ice ages underground. Over here, however, we've got very different marks. Can you see here? These are human-made marks. I do say human quite deliberately, not man-made, because women were mining here too. And if you were strong enough, you'd be doing the tough stuff along with the men. So it very much was uh, a family business. Men and women and children were involved in mining here. And here as well, we've got lots of more pick and chisel marks. And even here, candle marks, because obviously this is pre-electricity when they were mining here. And they needed these to mine by candlelight. Now, if we walk up further this way, we're going to find out who was mining here. This way, everyone. Old Marlon's hand, shall I? There's a lot of people. Oh, That's iron. 
Yes, iron increment. I'll explain to you what, what it does. Roman mine. If you're interested in seeing Roman mines, go across the other side of the river on High Tor. They've got some old Roman mines. They look like basically stone beaches in the in the hillside. They've got keep out signs. They're actually not that dangerous. If you go down there with a hard hat and torch, and at your own risk, of course, you'll be able to explore what Roman mines look like much nearer the surface. What we call open cut mining. However, this is deeper, so we know it's later in time. We suspect they were mining for lead in the Dark Ages, but we've got no proof of that. Um, the first proof is about 1470 in the Middle Ages, but the period I'm going to talk to you about is a bit later than that. Who's heard of the Great Fire of London? Yeah? What year was it? Shout it out. 1666. 1666, what a fantastic year. Just like 1066. It was very conveniently happened in the year 66, so you can all remember it. Basically, London disappeared in flames. It burned to the ground in one night. And as a result, we needed to rebuild the capital. And that's when they needed a huge amount of lead. They needed lead in construction. They needed it for windows, pipes, and roofs, and all elements of construction in this period of time in history. And suddenly, the price of lead shot up by 20 times. And it was a very lucrative business to be in all of a sudden, and that's when it took off in Masson Hill. There's a direct correlation between the mining here and the Great Fire of London. There's a link, and it really did support the economy around down here, that catastrophe here. So there was a silver lining to all that. Okay, now at that period of time, so we're talking late 17th and early 18th century, you'll know that in fact we didn't have dynamite back then, we only had gunpowder. We do, of course, associate mining with explosives, don't we? Blasting through the rock to get to the minerals. Gunpowder is not very effective on limestone. Limestone is really, really tough. It's very hard. The good side of that is it doesn't fall on top of your head. It doesn't collapse on top of you. It doesn't subside easily like shale does. The bad side is it's very hard to get anything out of it. So, gunpowder didn't work. So, one of the methods they use is something called... A plug and feather, which is this implement here, a rather modest little tool, but that's just there's a pub, for example, in Bolsover called the plug and feather, and you'll see pubs up and down the country with this name, and it's named after this very modest little tool here, which they use to extract minerals. So, if they thought lead was behind here, they drill a series of holes with a hand drill. Now, that hole alone, for example, would take three days. For those of you who can't see, it's about that long. A hole that long would take three days at that period. So, very laborious and very slow. Then they take this implement here. Let me just shine a light on that for everybody at the back. Okay, very, very but rudimentary. And then she put it inside the holes. So first of all, you put the feather part, which is the two bits here. And then you get the plug that goes in the middle. And that will go in the hole. Then have a whole series of holes and a whole series of plugs and feathers. Then they get a great big mallet or hammer and whack that as hard as they could. Then whack the next one as hard as they could. And whack, whack, whack until the pressure was so great, it would crack the rock. It would split away, sometimes very violently. And hopefully behind there you'd have lead ore, but not always. It was guesswork, but it was what you call intelligent guesswork, which is what geology is today. When they send geologists out to the middle of Africa to find minerals, 
Geologists are really guessing when they look around the rocks to see where they think the minerals will be. Um, so in fact, the miners at that time were what you could call, they were amateur geologists at this time. And the better you were at it, the more successful miner you were. Okay, we're going to go up here now and find out what they did next. Yeah, here you go. I'll shine my lights so you can see where the puddles are. 
Come right through so just so everyone can see the camera because this part's pretty good. Victoria's called this the Grand Grotto. Come through. Any little people that want to come to the front? Just weave your way through. This is the benefit of being small, you can shove to the front. I want you to see them in other ones. Come through. That's it. Are oh, you all up here? Can everyone see? Have you come forward? Are you guys here? Just come on a bit more. Don't be shy. No, no, no. Yes, yes. That's it. You need to be able to see this because this is quite something. Can everyone see this massive cavern here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now this is naturally formed, okay? This is formed by successive ice ages, hollowing out this wonderful cathedral-like space uh, and leaving behind really dramatic and fantastic shapes. But then along came humans that started pick and chiseling their way to get all the lead out. Can you see those scratches in my torch beam? Yeah. yeah, and there as well. Yeah. Okay. We've also got our mine shaft. You can't see it at the moment, but it's just over here, the mine shaft. Um, and the light will be shining down very, very sort of tiny glimmer. You can't see it because we've got the light on here. But the top of the mine shaft here comes out of our pond up at the visitor's centre. Okay, so we can back, go back up to the visitor centre, go back to the pond, it's quite pretty there anyway, you might even be lucky to see a frog or something. And up there, you can see um, right by there's a little plaque, an open mine shaft which has been gridded over so the kids don't fall down it, unfortunately the frogs do. Um, and then you can actually call down to us on our next tour. So I show you how to do that? Yeah? Okay, there's a particular call that really works well on a mine shaft. I'll, I'll demonstrate for you, ready? Together, okay? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> and if you're ever in Australia and you're lost in the bush, you just call Kiwi and everyone will answer back and you know where to go. Okay, that's called the Aboriginal bush cry. Very, very useful. Okay. The hook is huh? That's rock, yeah, it's a piece of limestone. Not worth much, I'm afraid. <laughs> now, we're going to go back down and we're going to meet John the Miner. If you want to take photographs, go ahead. Um, and he's going to tell us what it's like to be a miner in the 17th century. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, it's only me, John from Bonsall Way. I know it's difficult to see when you've only got a few candles, but that's how we work down here. You soon get used to it. Well, you have to if your livelihood depends on it. My family's been working this mine for over 50 years now, and not much has changed since my grandfather's time. That's my lad Jack now, bringing down the tools in the coal. That's a bucket, by the way and having a ride in it himself by the sound of it. I'll let him get away with it sometimes, he's only 13 after all. And I hope he's remembered the firewood, because Tom will need as much as he can get later today. I'll bet my wife's cursing up there in the rain. It's her turn to wind the stouse, so she'll be there all day without any shelter. You don't know what a stouse is? It's a winch. Well, you've got to have a winch to wind up the coal. No, she doesn't seem to mind the rain, my wife. She's used to being out of doors, mind, looking after our few ends and the pig. Myself, I'd rather be down here where it's dry. Of course, some lead mines are wet, but this one's dry enough so far. It's not really hard work. Steady, though. And in the last few years, we've found more lead here than we can get out. And there's still a lot left. The Romans are supposed to have worked this mine, you know. I don't believe in myself, but my grandfather did. He were a superstitious old soul, so all right. But as a miner, he were one of the best. He always said we'd strike it rich here and we have. 
You can see where it used to work, right up there in the room. Would make a work I call it. And they used such small pits in those days, just like birds' beaks. Ours are much larger now. Go on the ground faster. And of course, we're working the walls and floors now, not just the roof. But I expect we'll come to water sooner or later, and then we'll have to stop it. Just a minute, lad. Tell you what, you like using the grip stone. You can sharpen the picks for us till I'm ready. Oh, where was that? Oh, yes. It's not been here for a few years yet, and it's just as well. But there's a big demand for it now. What were known to be rebuilt after that great fire a few years back when all the churches were burned down. 1666, wasn't it? There's Tom splitting rock down there, using a plug and feather. That's when you drive a plug between two wedges into the wall to split away the rock between them. It's not dangerous work if you take care. Very few people die in mines like this. In fact, we live just as long as other folk. And not if we don't eat enough, though. Cross time, Jack! We're not supposed to eat down here, but everyone does, of course. We well, can't expect a man to work eight hours we have to buy to eat. But we don't waste time over it. After all, we're only paid for what we produce. Funny I should say how long lived miners are. Uh, well, that's only if they keep up the sieving. You can hear how Ben's coughing down there. He's cleaning the ore by holding a sieve with pieces of rock on it under water to wash away all the sand and grit. Now that's killing work, all right. I've heard that Ben coughs up blood sometimes. He's only 32, same age as me. But he'll not last another 30 years. Mind you, plenty of women do this work too if they're strong enough. Not my wife, though. So I need her to stay alive. Come on, Jack lad, plenty of more here. You'd better load up the cough again, or otherwise your mother will say we're not keeping her occupied on the staff. That boy's full of newfangled ideas, you know. His latest is gunpowder. It seems they've used it down the mine near Worksworth. Frighten some of the old timers almost to death, I shouldn't wonder. Dangerous stuff, I say. But then, I suppose I'm old fashioned. There's no wrong with fire setting, if you ask me. Light a fire by the rock wall, let it burn a few hours, then throw cold water on it, and the rock slap it up as it cools. Now, what could be easier than that? That's what Tom's doing down there, can you see? It's the rule now, we can't do it until the end of the day after four o'clock. Which is sensible, really. My father remembers as a lad being nearly choked to death by the smoke in this mine. Anyway, we'd better be going now and leave Tom to his fire. You can start collecting up the tools now, Jack. We've got a good load of ore today. Our master should be pleased. And there's no riding up in the cart this time. You can climb up the shaft like a proper miner. Don't leave it too long before you get out, Tom. And mind you throw the water on the fire this time. We don't want you choking down there. Well, I'm off now. By the way, when you next start walking the hills around here, give us all your miners. You've been away at the ground from the feet.
uh, to Matlock. Can I can I see the camera? And after that, we um and when um we are coming back, I think we're gonna get my dog. <laughs> we, we Whoa, look! Yeah, so it's a bit, it's yeah. more scary going down than it were going up. Why? I don't know. It just feels more scary. We don't. <laughs> Two of them carriages were empty. Might not be as many people coming up now. We've been, been there in the day, yeah. See the castle up there? Where's the castle? Oh, yeah. Hopefully, there's some history. Mama, sit down, please, because you'll rock the car. What are you doing? I'm looking down. Just being nosy, basically. Yes. Only I can be nosy because I'm looking to the floor. I'm going to say, why don't you just sit over there, then? Ooh, this is the highest bit, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go and do a drop. Mm. I don't want them to unleash, and then we all flop to them, and we all flop to them. That's not going to happen. <laughs> you have to see though, look, that's what we're hanging on by. It's so, pretty strong though. Yeah. I mean, it's. See the people. Ooh, I don't like how they're swinging at my neck. This is scary. Eh? No. Is it a bit scary? Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> It's like a horror movie. Look how far though down it is we could drop. Mm. Imagine if we all drop down all of us. Sit still though because I don't like it when it's rocking. This is why the other ones are filling up, yeah. And emptying. Well, this was our day. Just as we're walking back into Matlock, we've just seen these guys and the rock climbing up there. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, look out for Josh Empire also on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, also find us on Instagram and look for Steel City Explorers and Josh Photography, and also please donate to PayPal to help with our explorers.